As you prepare to get your new Jabra Panacast webcams and Speak 710 microphone and speaker, you may want to consider downloading Jabra Direct. Jabra Direct is a software that will allow you to control certain settings in your camera and your microphone. Jabra Direct only works on Mac computers that are running Catalina or Big Sur and only works on Windows 10. If you have those operating systems, you should go to jabra.com slash direct. This will take you to the website where you will download the software. After the website loads here, you will see your two software options for Windows or for Mac OS. Click the downloader and wait for that download to completely install. Once you've finished downloading the installer, click on the installer. I'm using a Mac, so here you will see what it looks like on the Macintosh. The windows will look slightly different. Open up the installer and agree to the licensure. Notice that the install will take approximately 250 megs of space on your computer's hard drive. Wait for the installation to complete. Once the installer is complete, you will see the Jabra Direct dashboard. The Jabra Direct dashboard will be empty at first because you do not have any devices connected. Once you have the Jabra Direct dashboard installed, you can plug your camera in. You will notice that by default, there is nothing showing on your dashboard. When you plug your camera in, you will notice the blue LEDs on the front of the camera flashing. This indicates that the camera is booting up. Once the blue LEDs go to a solid blue, the camera will appear on your dashboard. With the camera on your dashboard, click on the white arrow to view the settings. We have two sets of settings, video and device. Video settings are real-time settings and can be changed during a Google Meet. Device settings should be done prior to any kind of a Meet. Let's look at the device settings first. Device settings are what are called set and forget settings, meaning whatever you set up here will be uploaded to the camera, the camera will be rebooted, and then these settings will be permanent until you change them in the device settings again. The orientation is set to normal by default, which is the appropriate setting if your camera will be, will be mounted on top of your computer or digital board. If you choose to set this to inverted, that should only be done if your camera will be permanently mounted to a wall or some other location in which the mounting is done upside down. Field of view. This can set be set anywhere between 90 and 180 degrees in 30 degree increments. 180 is the recommended setting for first setup and then adjust as appropriate. Intelligent zoom is a option installed in your camera, which allows your camera to zoom in and out to show all participants in a meet. In the classroom environment, it is recommended that this be turned off. There are two video modes, both blend and carve. Blend mode is used for outdoor and carve is used indoor by recommendation. In your classroom, please choose the carve setting. Vivid HDR is an automatic adjustment your camera uses to adjust for the lighting in your room. It is highly recommended that this be turned on. If for some reason you choose to turn this off, the rest of the settings can be controlled in your video settings control. 
Line frequency is set to 50 to 60 hertz. This will work for almost all situations. If flickering should occur during your video, you can set this to 50 hertz only. It is recommended that you start at the auto 50 to 60 hertz setting. The LED lights are optional. By default, they're turned on. Blue LED lights indicate that the camera is powered up but turned off. White LED lights indicate that the camera is on and currently active. Once you have chosen all of your settings, click apply and your camera will reboot. Notice that it says some of your settings have been changed and requires a reboot. That reboot takes only a few moments. During the rebooting time, the camera will disappear from your dashboard. Once the reboot has completed, the camera will show back up. Now let's look at your video settings. The video settings again are a live setting, meaning these can be done during your Google Meet. If you are setting your camera up before your Google Meet, it is recommended that you open the preview window. When you open the preview window, you will see exactly what the camera sees. In this case, we are able to see that my camera is set to 180 degrees meaning I can move my hands all the way to the sides of my computer and I am able to see all of the video. For pan and tilt to work, you do have to zoom your camera in. When zooming the camera, dragging this indicator to the right zooms in closer as seen. The pan setting then allows you to look both to the left and the right of the camera. During these settings, some stitching may occur. As the camera is not really moving, it is simply sharing its view between the three lenses on your Panacast camera. The tilt, when moving to the right, tilts your camera up, the left tilts it down. Let me zoom in a little further so that you can see that. So when I tilt, move to the right, you see that the camera tilts up. When I move to the left, the camera tilts down. How far you can tilt depends upon how far in you are zoomed. You can click restore to restore your camera settings. If you turn turned off vivid HDR in the device settings, you can then come to the image quality settings here. Let me zoom in so you can see how this works. With the image quality settings open, you can control the brightness of your camera. Again, this will automatically be con controlled by the Vivid HDR settings. You can control your contrast, your saturation, your sharpness. Be aware that sharpness settings can slow down your computer. The default setting is ideal. You also have the option to automatically white balance, which is turned on by default, or if you turn that off, then you can choose your white balance here, sliding this slider to the left and the right. Once you have the device settings the way you want them, you simply click save to camera. This will then set your camera for those settings and apply them to the meet if you are currently in the meet. You can again restore these settings using the restore buttons in both of your image quality and pan tilt zoom settings. This concludes the Jabra Panacast settings. Next, we will take a look at the Talk 710 settings that you will use for your speaker. When working with your Jabra Talk 710, there are two options for connecting it to your computer. The first option is to use the built-in USB cable to direct connect it to your computer. When you plug your speak directly into your computer, it will show up on your dashboard. From there, 
you can control the Jobber Speak 710 settings, clicking again the right hand facing arrow. In here you have device settings. Most of these settings are not things that you will want to play with, but there are a few options. For example, you can change the device name. This way, if the teacher next door has a Speak 710 and yours and theirs are trying to connect to one another, if you choose to use the Bluetooth settings, you can determine which one you are connecting to by giving it the appropriate name. Voice guidance is going to allow the speak to give you instructions verbally when working with it. Shared use is utilized when you will be using more than one device with this speak 710. It is recommended that you leave this turn off. Then for pairing, you can also connect your 710 to other objects such as other speakers, other computers, and even cellular devices if connected via Bluetooth. In your soft phone settings, this will allow you to connect your Jabra Connect directly to a cellular device for phone calling. It is recommended that that be turned off. Button configuration is set so that you can either start voice instruction with the button included or not. I leave mine set to not, no function. The product information simply shows you where, what version of firmware you are running on your software. When you click apply, all new settings will be applied to your device. This will reboot your device. It is worth noting that in order to charge your Speak 710, it must be plugged into a USB port, either direct to a computer or to a wall plug using the appropriate adapter. If you would like to use your Speak 710 wirelessly, you can di disconnect your speaker from the computer and then plug in the provided USB dongle. When you connect the dongle, you will see that Jabra Link 370 comes up. In my case, I have a firmware update. It's worth noting that when devices are plugged into your computer, any necessary firmware updates will be indicated. With the Jabra Link 370, I am now able to connect my device to my computer through Bluetooth, allowing me to work remotely. 